One of Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham's public safety priorities that didn't make it to the finish line this past session would have changed our state's red flag law. Right now, at least, the law allows the government to require someone who could be perhaps dangerous to at least temporarily surrender their guns, but is it actually working? For investigator Ryan Laughlin examines a recent failure and reveals why the law is applied differently depending on where you live. New Mexico's 2020 red flag law creates an extreme risk firearm protection order. The respondent in an instance like this is somebody who has a gun who the reporting party might be worried about. The reporting party then takes their concerns to the petitioner. That's a law enforcement officer who does some paperwork, taking their concerns to a judge. Then the judge makes a ruling requiring the respondent to turn in his guns within two days. Now this process takes some time and even the New Mexico legal system can't agree on how this should work. That's part of the reason. A family says the red flag law failed them. He would help anybody with anything he possibly could. Matthias Wincoop was a roofer. Whether it was putting a roof on or giving him money, give him a place to stay. He was very generous. He battled alcoholism and mental illness. He would call me when he got really bad and I would tell him, just come home, it's fine. Just come home and we'll deal with it. We'll talk about it. But four weeks ago, Wincoop's mom got a different call. He told me, your son is dead. Albuquerque police say two officers shot at Wincoop when he pointed a gun at them at a west side apartment complex. Police missed, and then he shot himself inside his truck. Police also say Wincoop had tried before to get them to shoot him. Last year, prosecutors charged Wincoop with negligently using a deadly weapon. APD confronted him after staff at the same apartment complex said he appeared under the influence and waving a gun around. Police used a less lethal weapon to shoot him and then take him to the hospital. Were you aware of, of that interaction with police? No. No. Three days later, Wincoop called 911 saying he'd shot himself. A state police officer stopped him smelling alcohol and found 15 guns in his truck. The officer thought Wincoop was a danger to himself and started to raise the red flag. I think that regardless of what your political beliefs are, understanding what the law is and how it's supposed to be applied is always a good idea. As the New Mexico Solicitor General, Alethea Allen oversees appeals for the Attorney General. She says there is disagreement about the red flag law. The confusion is on reporting party. In Wincoop's case, the state police officer was both the reporting party and the petitioner. It's not clear if that's allowed. There's a case where in Santa Fe, the judge dismissed it on that basis alone. In fact, four investigates found only one extreme risk firearm protection order granted in 2023 in Santa Fe's district court. The reporting party was someone's mom. All other times police acted as the reporting party, a judge threw it out. Compare that to Bernalillo County District Court, where police agencies acted as the reporting party in most of the 30 orders we found in 2023. If I'm thinking about protecting the rights of gun ownership, sure. if the government is starting that process, perhaps that wasn't the intent behind this law. Perhaps. Um, we don't agree with that interpretation. The Attorney General is appealing the Santa Fe judge's ruling, and the office is also training law enforcement agencies on the red flag law. I think the red flag law completely failed Matthias. In Wincoop's case, a judge ruled he couldn't have guns for a year. It didn't make a difference. The red flag law to me is just secondary. The real issue is mental health. There has to be more than just taking someone's firearms from them because where's the follow-up? His family says they don't know where Wincoop got the gun police say he pointed at them, or if he ever turned in his guns after the judge's red flag ruling. Police are investigating. He wasn't this wild, crazy criminal, or he was just a person in mental distress who needed help if he didn't get it. His mom believes. They didn't handle it at all. They stood there and they yelled at him. This could have 
been prevented. Instead of getting him help. During the last session, the legislature considered a bill to clarify who can be that reporting party and how quickly a red flag should lead to someone surrendering their guns. That bill died on the House floor after waiting weeks for a vote, along with a handful of other gun safety bills. We've asked police for all their body cam footage of interactions with Wincoop, and we're told APD is expecting to hold a news conference next week to go over the day of his shooting. Brian Laughlin, for Investigate.